Another common weapon of war is religious fervor. This was the case in Vlad's time, and of course there are still echoes of that today because of conflicts between Christians and Muslims. One might think that a figure put up on a cross could certainly be a terrifying thing to someone, to think that someone who revered and loved a certain person more than anyone else and named his religion after him would be truly monstrous to repeatedly, symbolically kill his own savior and then march out into battle with that symbol in front of him. It certainly might give the enemy pause to think if this is how someone treats his most beloved savior, how would he treat his enemies? Vlad, of course, did this to demoralize his enemies, and his enemies had done the same thing at times. Vlad made crosses out of people. He stuck thick wooden poles through their bodies and left them to slowly slide down on the poles so that they would be very gradually and painfully impaled, much like crucifixion thereby dying a slow, painful death. This is quite ironic in that Vlad would hardly have been repelled by the sight of the cross, even though he was the inspiration for Dracula, because he used it as a weapon on his own enemies. However, there are some particularly gruesome depictions in what could be called propaganda pamphlets of the time, because Vlad made a lot of enemies in Germany, and these were done by Germans. He's shown, in essence, having a casual dinner amongst the corpses of the people that he's impaled. And once again, we get the image of the figure who's the inspiration for Dracula, being a lonely person and having to use extreme, even violent methods to have anyone to sit down to dinner and discussion with him. This is echoed today in some speculations about what might have been going on in the scene depicted by this woodcut, where modern people imagine Vlad having philosophical discussions about the meaning of life and death with the people that he has impaled on stakes. Now this is strictly apocryphal and something that's been made up in modern Romanian tourist pamphlets and people's interpretations of them on internet discussion blogs, but I think it's quite revealing of our time that some people would imagine Vlad in this particular way as having such a need to discuss the deeper questions of life that he would torture and kill people just to be heard. <laughs>